In today's vlog, we shoot two podcasts and a lot of other cool shit. So we're about to go live today on the new listing here at 362 Parkside Avenue. We have pretty much everything lined up. Um, the mailing will look something like this. This is obviously a paper copy. There's a couple of changes we've made since then. And I'm finishing the list of all the places we're going to send it out now. So we got a lot of stuff to do today. So there's, um, there's a couple of blocks that have like really beautiful, like turn of the century kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. I don't believe, I don't believe it's actually historic because it's like deep in Brooklyn, but it may be. So we got 400 met pieces to mail. This is too much. You know what, fuck it. I think it's gonna generate business. So we're here with the Made in New York podcast with Stephanie Floor, makeup extraordinaire. Um, tell us a little about yourself and your story. Yeah, so I've been a makeup artist for 10 years now. It's been a beautiful journey, I would say, that started in Long Island, New York, with just dreams of wanting to do makeup in magazines, Broadway, and it's crazy to look back now at 31 and say, wow, like I really was able to achieve lots of my dreams. Uh, it's been a long journey, but a very beautiful one, I would say. So tell me about the path. Tell me about the grind. Tell me about getting to fulfilling that first dream and where you are now and what the next dream is. Yeah, no, for sure. So. I mean, I remember being 14 years old and, you know, people always like, how did you become inspired to be a makeup artist? And to be honest, I would jump on the train and come into Manhattan on Halloween nights and roam around like a crazy teenager. But I was so inspired by drag queens and the art that I would see around me that I just felt like I wanted to be part of that. Yeah, I posted that video to Instagram. Smurd already wants the specifics. Wow. I'll show you. Um, what's your email? Yeah, may I get a detailed income and expenses? Just DM'd you. I'd love to sell this shit direct. Do you know what I mean when I say that? All right, I have so, an idea, but it's probably wrong. so selling it direct means that the buyer comes without a broker. Oh, okay, nice. So technically then you end up with both sides of the commission, nice. which is always nice. And then that proves my thesis that this works. Yeah. And then essentially that pays for you and whoever the next person I hire for the year. So. And we just gotta do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again. But once I do it, I'm gonna spend probably as much money as I'm spending on rebounding off an L, on whatever the piece of content we create around, you know, yeah. the ROI of social media. So, we gotta sell it now, that's the next step. Yep. Getting the listing is the easy part. Although a lot of agents would like you to believe otherwise. I need to get myself in shape. I just don't know when I have the time. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. Like I want to run in the morning is like part of my morning routine. Yeah. But by the time I get up, I'm already ready to go. I'm like, Phew. Like I was up at 3.30 this morning. Already working on shit, you know? This way I can put in a few hours before Cooper wakes up. And I had to drop him at daycare this morning, which is why I was down to the office when I did. But, uh, you know, try to make the most out of every day. Oh, 
Right there. <laughs> that that might actually be a better idea. We can't. I don't want to share any of this stuff. You know what I mean? Like I don't want anybody to know that that's the angle I'm gonna. Like the the cryptic fucking Instagram post is enough for me. You can set the age group, right? So like let's say for whatever reason, right? You go back. And now I can reach 1,600 to 4,200 people for 20 bucks over seven days. $20 for seven days or $20 a day? $20 for seven days. Wow. Right? Okay. So what, what I generally will then do, and you'll notice this. So like if I, if I let them decide and it's automatic, you get a wider spread, but you're not as specific as to who you're targeting. Seven days is a little bit long, right? Yeah. So I like to set it to like three days because it'll give me the data points that I need. And once you get to 500 views, you'll get the relevant score. So if I see the relevant score at that point, then I'll just retarget where I'm coming from. And I mean, I've gained like 1400 followers in the last month yeah. and a half. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. But like, yo, so, so this dude, right now in my DMs, I have somebody that's looking for an apartment, right? Just randomly, like hit me up. That's great. $2,300 a month. You know, it may not be much, but like girl, you take... Where are you based on? Manhattan and Brooklyn? Manhattan Brooklyn, Queens. I'm looking for... My girl and I are looking for an apartment, actually. In... I don't know. Like, I guess close. Was it 2000 to $2,500 range? Mm-hmm. One bed, two bed? Two bedroom. It's definitely hard. I know. We have one, but it's far. It's not far. It's in College Point. It's nice. It's got a backyard. Big backyard. One parking spot. And um, it's, it's dope, but it's just far. Yeah, I mean that's that's what you cars, though, but that's what you get as you go further away from from public transportation. I know. I don't gonna, mind that. Um, my focus is on in Brooklyn and Queens is like shit that's connected to the subway. So like I won't do business in Whitestone. I'll refer that shit out. Like it just it doesn't make sense for me because yeah. I'm not the best person to help you. Um, of course, not, yeah. but like, so I live in Glendale now. Like I lived in Jackson Heights for a long time, right? And when I had my son, I moved there just because it made sense. We wanted more space. Yeah. And I'm on the end of Glendale that just meets Ridgewood and Bushwick. So, like, from here, it's Cooper, right? 10 minutes, right? Not far for Cooper, right? I'm off of uh, Central. So, there, you could get, like, similar to what we live in for less than what you're looking for That's now. That's what we're looking for, that neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. find something there. Yeah, yeah. When, okay, yeah. Two what? bedrooms, parking. Parking, you may have to like no, I know. push in separately, but yeah, her yeah. Her main thing is the backyard, also. She wants access to the backyard, and it's tough. <laughs> so it's, it's tough. Like, we yeah. got it, but it's, it's all here in College Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The it's problem is probably uh, the backyard. Because yeah. a lot of the way the housing stock was built out there, there were no backyards. So, one thing I realized is there's a, although there's seven, eight million people out of me there are now, there's only so many people that are really out there like doing shit. There's a lot of people that are just like to talk. And, and, and you know, you see it in here with just the amount of people in and out, in and out, in and out. Yet the people that are like out there doing shit, they're like, get about it, get in, get out, do what the fuck you need to do, or it's just a different way you move, yeah. you know? All right, cool. So um, literally all this is is just talking about like you, what you've done, a little bit about New York, um, and whatever else kind of comes. I don't really generally have any sort of like standard questions. It's more <laughs> of like... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, but it's more of like a conversation that I think New York has got something to it that makes people, that creates success. And different people who live here, like whether for a short period of time or the whole lives, see things in a slightly different way as a byproduct of being in the city. So for me, it's just like, I feel like the more I hear stories and talk to people, the more shit will become like clear. Plus, listen, I mean, everybody loves the internet, so like... Yeah, I mean, it's the only way right now. But, it, I mean, it's just, it's, it's how we consume. You know, think about how much TV yeah, you watched think. five years ago versus how much TV you watch today. It's significantly different. Yeah. So, like, I put out, like, 300 pieces of content before I hired Brandy, yeah. and I realized that, like, not everybody gives a fuck about real estate. So, at the end of the day, like, I got to be able to tell more stories than just real estate. And I realized, like, the shit that I was teaching my agents is applicable across any business. And then New York, everybody just, New York is one of the top tourist destinations in the world every year. 
So it's like if I tell more of that, it just makes sense. And ever since I shifted, the response has been fucking insane. To the point where like, it's more so justified me being the real estate broker that dresses like this. Yeah. Because none, like yeah. That's because none of my competition would dare. So it's just about 10 o'clock. We just left Mickey's Barbershop shoot in the second podcast of the day. Long, long, long busy day. Just gonna grind out another one tomorrow.